Alright, here's our new lesson. We are going to multiply things with 1 and 0. So our question is, what happens when you multiply a number by 1 and 0? Who knows? Let's find out. Let's take a look at our first question. Luke sees four bird baths. Each bird bath has two birds in it. What multiplication sentence tells how many birds there are? Well, the first thing we need to do is draw ourselves a picture. Now, even if you can't take the time to draw yourself a really cute bird bath like I have here, you can draw yourself circles or some kind of other container to put your birds in and just pretend it's a bird bath. So let's put birds in our bird bath for our picture. So we have two in the first one. How many bird baths? Four bird baths. One, two, three, four. And then two birds in each bath. One, two, three, four birds, five, six birds, and seven, eight birds. Does every bird bath have two birds in it? Yep. Every bird bath has two birds and there are four bird baths. So what's the multiplication sentence that we can use here? We can use the four times two equals eight because we have four bird baths. One, two, three, four times two birds in each bath equals eight. Now let's change the problem up a little bit. We've still got the same problem as we did before. Luke sees four bird baths. Each bird bath has two birds. And this is the picture that we drew last time. But we're going to change the problem up a little bit. One bird flies away from each bird bath. What multiplication sentence shows the total number of birds left? So first we need to take one bird away from each bird bath. One bird, another bird, just one from each bird bath. Okay, so I, now I have one bird left in each bird bath. So what is the multiplication sentence that I can use to show the number of birds left? Well, first I need to say how many bird baths I have. I have one, two, three, four bird baths. I still have four bird baths. But now, what am I multiplying by? How many birds are in each bath? One, two, we have one here, one here, one here, and one here. How many are in each bird bath? One. So, four times one equals, and what's our total? One, two, three, four. So four times one equals four. Well, now we're going to change the problem up a little bit again. Look at our original problem, and we had one bird fly away from each bird bath the last time. Now, another bird flies away from each bird bath. What multiplication sentence shows the number of birds left in the bird baths? So let's take our little lovely birds and we're going to fly another bird away from each bird bath. We're going to take this bird and this bird and this bird and this bird. Oh, well now we've got a new multiplication sentence. How many bird baths do we have? How many groups? We still have four. One, two, three, four. We still have four bird baths. But now, how many are in each bird bath? How many birds? Oh, zero. There's zero birds in each bird bath. So we have four times zero. Well, what is the number of birds left in the bird baths? How many birds? Zero. So now we know four times zero is zero. So those problems all showed us different properties of multiplication. We've already talked about the commutative property where you can turn the problem around and the factors don't matter. What order the factors are in doesn't change the product. But this new property, this is the zero property of multiplication. The zero property of multiplication states that the product of zero and any other number is still zero. So, 4 times 0 is 0. If we're going to look at this problem and model it out, 4 groups of 0. Do we have 4 groups? 1, 2, 3, 4 groups. And how many are in each group? 0. There are 0. So 4 times 0 is 0. That is the 0 property of multiplication. Now let's take a look at the identity property of multiplication. 
The identity property of multiplication says that the product of one and any number is that number. What? You think, what in the heck does that mean? Identity. Think of your identity. You are you. Your mom and dad and I have driver's licenses. We have identification that says who we are. So the identity property of multiplication says that the product of one and any number is that number. So the product of one and any number equals that number. Let's test that theory. Let's look at four times one. How many groups do we have? Four groups. We have one, two, three, four groups. And how many are in each group? Four groups of one. So let's put one in each group. Just one. So if we have four groups with one in each group, how many total do we have? We have one, two, one, two, three, four. So our total number is four. Well, look at that. We have four times one equals four. It equaled itself. So the product of one and any number is that number. So let's review what, here's our question. What happens when I multiply a number by one and zero? Well, we learned this is like the easiest multiplication properties ever. The identity property says that if I multiply a number, any number by one, it equals that number. So with that, seven times one should equal seven. Six times one is six because any number times one is itself. It's like a mirror. One is like a mirror. It shows that number itself. So four looks in the mirror and it sees a one, so it, it is four. Two looks in this mirror, two times one is two. And it doesn't matter how big the number is. 1,345 times 1 is equal to 1,345. It looked in the mirror of the 1 and it saw itself. Now let's look over at our 0 property. Our 0 property says that any number times 0 equals 0. You need to remember that anything times 0 is going to equal 0 no matter how big or small. So, 5 times 0 is 0, 8 times 0 is 0, 12 times 0 is 0, 19 times 0 is 0, and 2,994 times 0 is 0. You've got it. So, these are the two most simple properties of multiplication. Identity property, where anything times 1 is itself and the zero property, where anything times zero is zero. You can use these properties to solve your multiplication problems because if it's multiplied by one or multiplied by zero, you automatically know what the answer is. So let's work these out and use them in the classroom.